Hi, Peter Charles here for Fly Fly Fishing. And today let's take a look at the impact our streamers have on the way we fish them. Because we shouldn't really think that all streamers should be fished the same way. There are differences in the way they're made, the types of hooks they're tied on, what they imitate. And all those different things will have an impact on how we fish them. So let's take a look at the streamers I have here. I have this little guy here, a little bead head that imitates a very small bait fish. We have uh, a little rainbow trout, we have a black ghost, we have my black nose dace weemer, and we have my saltwater weemer. Now, let's take a look at the hooks. This is a straight eye, up eye, down eye, down eye, up eye. This all has an impact on how we fish these flies. Now, let's take a look at this little guy here, the uh, little bead head. That imitates a little tiny bait fish. And if you've ever watched little tiny bait fish in the water, they move in little short little jerky motions. It's boink, 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 boink. They don't swim in long straight lines. And they don't uh, swim, unless they're fleeing a predator, they're, they just move little a few inches at a time and little short little bursts. Well, when we're stripping this, that's exactly what we should be doing. We should be going little, little short little strips, erratic, pause, strip, strip, pause, and that kind of erratic, very small strips, taking our time to work the water, fits the size of the fly and fits the bait fish it's trying to imitate. So with that kind of fly, I'm going to be working it slowly with little short, sharp strips and very erratic strips. Now moving up to the um, little rainbow trout and the black ghost, both of those are tied on long shank down eye streamer hooks. Now, there's a problem with long shank down eye streamer hooks. They take a lot of current and a lot of speed to ride close to being level. I did a test with these two flies. They have they're identically constructed. Uh, the hooks weigh the same, except that's an up eye and that's a down eye. And I shot a little video on them. And the up eye hook ran consistently lower and straighter than the up eye, uh, the down eye hook, sorry. The down eye hook ran at an angle. So the whole time it's running at an angle, whereas the up eye hook was almost level. And because of that angle, the current tended to push the down eye fly up. And because the up eye hook was riding almost level, it would stay down because the water pressure had less effect on it and was less likely to push it up. So as a consequence, when you're running streamers on these down eye, long shank down eye hooks, you got two things going. You've got that you know, rather steep angle, and also the hook gape is quite a distance from the end of the wing because you now, you know, especially when it's a long hook, you know, it's got a long way to go before with that droop. So those kinds of flies, we, we have to really think about how we're fishing them. They take a lot of current speed and a lot of stripping speed to run almost level. So you, they're going to be moved fast. So you need to be using them in situations where the fish want a fast moving streamer or you're fishing them in heavy current. It was interesting on a recent video that I shot using the Black Ghost, um, almost all, of, in fact, almost all of my hookups came either on the dangle or very, very close to the dangle um, because, you know, at that point, that is when the current is acting on the fly at the greatest extent it would be riding closest to level. Plus, in, from the point of view of the fish, it's the rear aspect of the fly it's seeing. It's not seeing the fly broadside. It's seeing it, you know, a slight angle from the rear. So when it comes up from behind, even if it might be aiming for the head, it has a, uh, and it's coming up from below, it has a much greater shot, uh, grabbing the gape and the rest of the fly. So I got reliable hookups uh, for the most part uh, with that presentation, but always, always, almost directly downstream of me. I did not get any fish broadside. I didn't even get a single hit when this fly was moving broadside. And it was moving, at that time, moving relatively too slow for me to, for that thing to ride even close to level. It would be sagging badly. So it didn't look great. So if you're going to run with these down eye hooks, and especially the long shank down eye hooks, you have to be moving them fairly quickly. You have to be moving them in current. And I'd be looking at sharply angled downstream casts. So the, the rear aspect of the fly is always being presented to the fish. Now, I'm not saying you're never going to catch a fish casting across the stream in a slow current and letting this thing swing. Yeah, people have caught fish doing it. I'm just talking about improving your odds. You, you'll do better 
if you make an effort to keep the speed of these down eye hooks, keep the speed up with stripping and the current you're using them in, and also that downstream presentation, which also helps to keep the speed up. So it does two things. They ride a little bit more level, and they're presenting the fly of more of a quartering rear aspect. Uh, so when the fish hits, they're more likely to hook up. Now when we get into these up high hooks like this uh, Black Nose Days Weimer and this little guy, they run level, especially this bead head. That bead head brings the center of gravity so far forward, this thing runs very, very level. So as a consequence, you can run these flies at slower speeds and they'll run level and they'll look natural. More to the point, the construction, look at the construction difference between this Black Ghost and this Black Nose Days Weimer. I've got all this marabou here. And that marabou really kicks around in the current. Whereas this, the feathers and the hair wing on this black nose dace are not going to move nearly as much. So if I'm going to be choosing these flies for uh, fast water or slow water presentation, this is a fast water presentation, but this is an anything presentation. I call it weimer because you can treat it like a wet fly, you can treat it like a streamer. So I can swing this in a relatively slow current. It'll swing level and that marabou will kick around in the current and still give it life. So it looks good even when moving slow. So think about that for a moment. This fly does not look good moving slow, but the Black Nose Days Weimer does look good moving slow. So as a consequence, you can present this broadside to fish. And I caught a few, uh, was it two days ago, uh, I was fishing very slow water. I was making a 90 degree cast across the current and it was move the current was moving so slow. I mean, there was barely any downstream swing and I was stripping it directly across, across the current and nailing fish. And they like that broadside, slow broadside presentation. So that kind of construction gives me options uh, for slow water and uh, fast water um, stripped. Cross stream presentation, downstream presentation doesn't really matter. It'll do it all. This one I have to be more careful. I have to think more. With the Black Ghost I have to think, yeah, downstream, fast water to get that to present correctly. My um, uh, saltwater weimer, same thing, it uses marabou. Uh, I can present it slow, I can present it fast because it's a relatively short hook for the size of the fly. It will ride relatively level and it strips very well. And if you're in a, um, a rip situation, you can swing it in the rip and it'll work just fine. So again, it gives me options as to how I can fish it and um, the situations I can fish it in. So when we're going out to select streamers, you can't look at that black nose dace uh, pattern right here and my black ghost pattern and think of them as the same kind of fly that you can fish the same way. No. You have to think of how the fly is going to behave in the water and then fish it in the kinds of conditions using the techniques that's appropriate to the fly. Also appropriate to the size of the fly and the fish it's imitating. Uh, this size of pattern in my saltwater weimer moves quickly. Those bait fish move fairly quickly and they'll move in a straight line, steady straight line. So you can fish them that way. If you ever want, I mean, I'll stand there and I'll watch bait fish and you can see bait fish that size, that basic color and shape, and they're swimming uh, with the current as the current is leaving an inlet, let's say, and they're all going dead straight, dead smooth, None of that herky-jerky motion you see out of the little freshwater fish. So I've designed a fly that you know, I can fish in a straight line, just keep a steady strip going, and it just moves dead straight. So, and it will, and with all that marabou, everything's still fluttering around, even though I'm pulling it dead straight through current or through a rip or just in still water. It doesn't matter. So I've designed these flies, these two here and this guy here, to do specific jobs in specific conditions. These two are more generic um, streamers that um, you know, you've know you seen for years and years and years. Everybody's used them for years. Very common patterns. But if you want to be effective with them, think about how they swim and use them appropriately. So there's a little bit more to fishing streamers than just chucking them out there and stripping them back. The design of the streamer and the type of hook we tie them on will have a Im big impact on how it performs and how well it catches fish. So give that some thought the next time you go out with some streamers. Cheers.